to the Portsmouth Newsroom. Thank you for tuning in to this month's episode. I am Caroline Sweet, your anchor for today's broadcast. As a reminder, from across the Seacoast area, Portsmouth Newsroom is here to bring you stories illuminating our communities and developments that have a positive influence on our daily lives. Today, we will dive into events coming up, a February recap, and an interview with Portsmouth Public Media's own Alexis Mason on how to keep moving and motivated. Today is March 8th, which is International Women's Day. This year's theme is Inspire Inclusion and to understand and value women's inclusion. The International Women's Day organization states that when women are inspired to be included, there's a sense of belonging, relevance, and empowerment. To learn more about the importance of this day and how you can support the inclusion of women, go to internationalwomensday.com and make sure to respect and support the women in your life today and every day. To start off with some exciting events this month, 3S Art Space, which was highlighted on last month's episode of Portsmouth Newsroom, has been featuring the work of Ryan Rasmussen in his exhibit, Vibrant Matter. Rasmussen's work is multidisciplinary and spans practices in sculpture, installation, kinetic and electronic works, haptic installations, and many more. This exhibit explores the physical and virtual and invites viewers to come gain insight in where they lie within it all. Vibrant Matter will be on display until March 31st, so be sure to stop in to the 3S Art Space within the coming weeks. The local Stoneface Brewing Company just turned 10 this past February. To celebrate, they released 10 new beers. If you missed their big birthday party but are still looking to celebrate on March 20th, they're having a bonsai bar where you can learn the fundamentals and techniques behind the art of bonsai while enjoying a night out with friends. On March 24th, they're hosting Dirty Old Sunday with Happy Face Barbecue, a guest DJ, and some merch giveaways. Stoneface Brewing is located at 436 Shuttock Way in Newington, New Hampshire. Be sure to visit their website to learn more about these events and future events coming up. Trivia Night continues at the Great Rhythm Brewing Company every Monday. Nothing beats a trivia night of putting your random knowledge to the test. Tuning into your fifth grade history class or the media's latest pop culture is a guaranteed great time. In live theater this month, the Seacoast Repertory Theater is performing Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 from March 7th through April 7th. The show is a regional premiere of the Tony Award-winning electro-pop sensation that fuses together Russian folk music with an indie house EDM and electro-pop to retell the story of war and peace in the backdrop of 19th century Russia. The show times are Thursday and Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m., Friday and Saturday evenings at 8 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday afternoons at 4 p.m., so there are plenty of opportunities to attend the showing. The Players' Ring has a new and exciting show coming up this spring called America, America, which is written and directed by Joan Bigwood. The show is about a woman named Modesta who is hired as a cleaning person for venture capitalist Mark Portman and his wife Jane. With rumors of an affair and complications of a household, Modesta and Jane grow to form a special friendship. This play is in English and Spanish with English subtitles, and it will be running from April 5th through the 14th with evening and matinee options. Tickets can be purchased online at theplayersring.org slash shows. The Music Hall is also hosting quite a list of events this month. The Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra is performing on Sunday, March 10th, Louisiana's own Marc Broussard on March 11th, Haley Hendrick and the Westerlies on the 15th, Grammy-nominated Brandy Clark and Hayes Carl will be performing on the 16th, Julian Logg on the 19th, and Black Violin The Experience Tour will be performing on March 27th. For details on these performances and others, visit their website, themusichall.org. At the press room this month, as usual, there's plenty of great live music. The band Similar Kind, featuring Durham's own Matt Oriente, is performing there on March 20th at 7 p.m., and they're a can't-miss show while they're on their Primavera tour. The History and Hot Chocolate Lecture series by Caroline S. Roy is taking place on March 16th from 1.30 to 3 p.m. The series is being hosted in the 1716 Warner House of, on 150 Daniel Street in Portsmouth. There is limited seating at this event, so please pre-register if you're interested in attending. Gearing towards our youngest audience members, the New Hampshire Children's Museum has many exciting events coming up this spring as well. Each week there is Baby Storytime, Wacky Art Wednesdays, Science Fridays, Cultural Crafts, and a special event on March 23rd geared toward the 21 plus community um, called Cider Flights and Tasty Bites featuring North Country Hard Cider. Be sure to check out their exhibits and visit their website to learn more. 
The Seacoast Science Center has some fun and educational events coming up geared towards kids. Nature at Night is a free event hosted every third Friday of the month filled with family-friendly marine science activities. On March 24th, they also have a seal walk in the evening along the coast. Pre-registration is required, so be sure to sign up. If you're still feeling intimidated by the wintry chills that just seem to keep lingering in the seacoast area, Portsmouth Public Media has an array of online content that you can indulge in from the comfort of your own home. The Seacoast Storytellers perform live at the PPM TV studios every third Tuesday of the month, and we will record it and share it with you via YouTube within the following days. Tune in to listen to the Seacoast Best Storytellers share tales from across time and from around the world as they keep the art of storytelling alive in the modern age. On the topic of Portsmouth Public Media, I had the opportunity to sit down with Alexis Mason, who hosted the morning show Priority One for many years. Her show brought in millions of viewers as she shared accessible workout routines that can be done from the comfort of your own home. Alexis prioritizes functional fitness and is going to share with us some of her tips and tricks to a healthy lifestyle. <music> We're sitting down here today with Alexis Mason, PPM TV's own, um, and we're going to learn a little bit more about some fitness and motivation that we can bring with us into the new year. And so, Alexis, could you tell us, um, through teaching classes, um, your fitness show, and having clients, um, where did you find this passion for building a career in fitness? That's a great question, Caroline. Uh, sometimes I wonder myself. I think fortunately we live in a day and age when people can reinvent themselves. You know, back in my grandfather's day and age, everybody stayed in the same career for 50 years. You had a pension. The world was a different place. Uh, I actually went to school initially with the plan of going uh, with a, looking for a career in law. So I guess in a way I should put a balance joke in here, right? Um, <laughs> I guess in a way I've, I've you know sort of stuck with balance. I found that. Uh, it was such an important piece for me in my life that I was finding a way to exercise, I was running, I was so engaged with it personally that I thought, I think this is what they mean when people say you should do what you know and do what you love. Wow. So it became very, and, and it, it comes with a really comfortable wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, and, and of course, it's, it's something that never leaves us. It's always a need. Throughout different stages of life, your goals and your desires may be different, uh, but I felt, it, I felt that I was catering to my needs and I thought, well, geez, you know, maybe this is something I could help other people with. And here we are today. Wow, yeah, that's incredible. Um, such a career pivot and it's such... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I think having that like fitness-led life, like it's beneficial in every stage. And I, that kind of leads um, into my next question about how um, we can all be incorporating um, fitness into our lives and staying active when it can feel so overwhelming to kind of break into yes. these habits. Um, yes. What's your best advice kind of for all of us who are trying to do that? That's a, another great, you follow great questions, Caroline. <laughs> I have a feeling you have a few more. Uh, <laughs> so I think that there is one of, there are a number of things about the industry in which I work mm -hmm. that I would change and this is one of them. I think that we have, uh, we are marked, we are marketed, or we have this this um, sort of desire. I don't know if I want to say desire. We feel as if we have to go to the gym, put in an hour. It has mm -hmm. to be super sweaty. It has to be long, or it's not working. It's got to be fast, or the weight has to be heavy. And these are really all misconceptions, because truly we can. If, if we're just a little bit, we have a little bit of consistency throughout the day. It doesn't need to be grueling. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to be fast and it doesn't need to be heavy and it, you also don't need to leave the house to do it and i think that part of the all of this becomes very intimidating when you start to think about okay i need to pay for a gym membership i have to get the clothes because if i'm going to go to the gym i have to look the part mm -hmm. uh, then i have to spend the time getting to the gym i have to figure out what to do i have to spend the time getting home and that becomes uh, it's just it's just too many layers mm -hmm. it's too many layers and Ideally, we could do, if we have just a little bit of space at home, we could do everything we need to do because we come with everything we need. Could you share what some of these key exercises might be? I know you specialize in people with compromised health and mobility. Um, is there kind of, through working with all these different abilities, you found that there are specific exercises that might be best for all of us to incorporate? Three key exercises. Now, this is 
I'm going to just assume that we have both of our feet beneath us and we have mo a basic mobility in all four limbs. Okay. That we can stand and we have, we are agile and independent. Uh, even, even at our, for lack of a better phrase, most decrepit, if we are, if we can stand on our own, sitting and standing is key. And this is a good chair for it. It's not a hard seated chair. Ideally, we would be using a hard seated chair mm -hmm. and we would bring our hips toward the front of the chair. We would find our heels on the floor, keeping our knees hip width apart, and we would stand up, ideally without using the, the sides of the chair, mm -hmm. but of course some people that's a necessity. Uh, but sitting and standing repeatedly, not quickly, in a controlled motion so that you can keep your blood pressure down, you can keep your wits about you, and simply doing that a number of times. And like I mentioned, I always default or come back to three to five times because that's achievable. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to do 20 of them in a row. We could do three, maybe an hour later you do another three, maybe later in the day you do three to five. It's where you can fit it in because if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. Another great exercise is when, perhaps when we are thinking of the lower leg muscles, when we are standing maybe at this kitchen sink or again if we're in the restroom, mm -hmm. coming up on the balls of your feet and lifting your heels off of the floor and then placing the heels back down, coming again up on the balls of the feet as if you're reaching for something high, you know those muscles, the calf mm -hmm. muscles, and that helps as we're getting older to keep those low leg muscles, uh, what, what's a great word I'm looking for, I'd like to say strong, but even just, just adept mm -hmm. at the action of lifting the toes and the heels. Mm -hmm. Lastly, my third one that I'd like to encourage, and this can, there are actually two because we want to incorporate the upper body. If we can, do a few push-ups, and we'll, of course, we're looking at, I would say always learn these before, watch them online, uh, talk to your doctor about them, look into it before we just assume that we're capable of doing them. Mm -hmm. A push-up, I'm sure you, we all know what that looks like, but maybe putting the hands on the kitchen counter because getting down onto the floor it, it comes with a host of challenges mm -hmm. and isn't right for everyone. But on the kitchen counter, most of us, or even on a wall, most of us can lower our or descend into that space and then push away. The push-up is a perfect exercise because it incorporates every upper body muscle. The front works, the back works, the side works, everything works, nothing gets away without moving. Now, if that isn't comfortable, or maybe we are, uh, we don't have the flexibility, perhaps we, the schedule flexibility, maybe we're at work all day and you're at a computer and we, as you know, this, our world now tends to live in this position. It's the screen, it's the rounded shoulder, mm -hmm. and we can feel it in the neck, the upper back, and, and the, so our inclination naturally, as you know, is to, open up the front of the body mm -hmm. because now we've been contracted and to start to stretch and what we're actually doing is opening the front and engaging the back so on that note simply taking the shoulder blades and squeezing them together around the spine and that could be just sitting at your desk squeezing the shoulder blades around the spine and then releasing or we could go as far as to say pull the elbows back and squeeze mm -hmm. the spine and that way we are not only again opening up the chest muscles, stretching the front, opening mm -hmm. the lungs, allowing everything a full breath of air, but we are incorporating the upper back muscles. One thing to be very aware of is to not jut the chin forward when we're doing that. Okay. So if I'm squeezing the spine, we might, if you're practicing out there with me, you <laughs> might feel there's a tendency for the chin to jut forward and then retract. We very much want to keep that neck up and steady. So to put it all together, practicing sitting and standing, ideally from a hard seated chair so that the hips and the spine are stable, pushing up through the heels. Uh, number two, our lower leg muscles of coming up on the heel, little calf raises, keeping those lower leg muscles and ankle muscles engaged so we don't catch that throw rug or door jam. Mm -hmm. And then number three, finding a way to incorporate the upper body, engage the, the front and the back in a perfect situation. We're using the push up muscles, and if that's not possible, then we are doing at least some squeezes of the shoulder blades around the spine to start to keep, to get used to contracting those muscles. Just a little bit of something for everything. I mean, granted, there are a million exercises, but those are things that anyone, we, we could all do and we should all do. Anyone mm -hmm. should be able to find some semblance of, of uh, you know, a little combination of exercises in there that work for them. Yeah. That's a really long-winded explanation, don't get me started. <laughs> no, that was fantastic. I think all those exercises you mentioned could easily be incorporated into someone's daily life. Yes. It doesn't 
as you were mentioning um, earlier, like the process of going to the gym, buying the clothes, like learning, so like it's so much, all the machines and everything. And this would be just a great way, even sitting here now, we could just lift yes. our calves and we're already helping our bodies for the future. So with these great um, exercises that you've mentioned that really prioritize like all these important parts of our body, what are ways that we can kind of ignore um, like fads, like fitness yes. fads and like trends that are constantly popping up? We see them in magazines, on social media, like what are good ways to kind of combat them and kind of seek out what is truly beneficial in fitness and workouts? I wish that, uh, I think every, of course there's always a fad because we've something has to sell mm -hmm. and change and things that are shiny and new and can we find a way to make it more interesting, more colorful, faster, you know, whatever. There's always a way to shake it up and there are a lot of sales tactics out there. How can I, how could I help people to ignore the fads? Probably just by saying, ignore the fads, there's no <laughs> magic. Uh, really, if we think about what we have, we aren't much different than, than the caveman was Mm -hmm. And they had to stay, it was effortless for them because they had to stay fit, they had to yeah. keep moving. And if we just keep moving and we think about what we're putting into the body. So I like to say that salad feeds the body, but chocolate feeds the soul. <laughs> so everything in moderation. We can't make good decisions when we are coming at it from a negative mindset. Mm -hmm. So if we're constantly worried about the things we're not getting done, the things we shouldn't be eating, uh, that we're not doing it well enough, hard enough, fast enough. That is create. That's a what we might call a negative motivation. And really, I think maybe everyone would agree. You can't. There's no such thing as negative motivation. Yeah. It's just discouragement. And we're coming at that from always feeling lesser than. So when we think about fads, just keeping in mind that your caveman is your caveman. We have just a handful of things that work for all, and it's diet. Keeping, you know, keeping your vegetables in your diet. Of course, you're going to eat cake. Cake is delicious. <laughs> have the cookie. Life is short. Have the extra cookie while you're at it. Somebody has to. <laughs> so eat your vegetables, drink your water, and keep moving. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's all we have. If all of the gyms, if everything was leveled tomorrow and all of the expensive workout wear was leveled, was gone tomorrow, we would still be able to eat our vegetables, drink our water, and keep moving. You don't need a gym to stay fit. Ask me, Fo follow along, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> because I can take you there. Uh, if we have just a little bit of space in our house, we don't need that expensive gym membership. And again, ultimately, there is no magic. There is nothing new under the sun. Vegetables, movement, and water. That's it. Um, where could um, viewers in the audience right now go to learn about the um, classes and resources that you offer? Oh, great. So that would be my website, of mm -hmm. course, which I know you've done a little research, yes. uh, which it would be obviously www. I don't know where else we find anything. <laughs> Priority1.us. I couldn't get the .com, that one was gone, so for a handful of years I've been Priority1.us. And as you know, I do teach a class locally here, mm -hmm. which is our Fit Over 50 class, and that is a terrific program for people, for anyone and everyone, and I'll take you if you're 48, come on in. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's we um, kind of, we're not, it's not grueling, and people mm -hmm. very much appreciate that they're coming into a group of folks just like themselves. People don't care what you look like, we're all there to laugh. Again, if it's not enjoyable, then you should find something else to do that is enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, of course, we can find Priority One right now on our YouTube channel. And if you are a regular PPM TV watcher, then, and you're a morning person, it requires being a morning person. <laughs> uh, we do run in the mornings, Monday through Friday, on the station, right here on PPM TV, or on our YouTube channel. So if you are on YouTube, type in PPM TV and everything we do, everything on the station, of course, will pop up. Um, beyond that, I will put a little teaser out there that my producer, Bill Humphreys, and I are working on a large compilation of, of exercise programs and options, which will become available to hopefully everyone we're looking at this year, and that will allow people to pick and choose. I could do a little leg exercise, I could do an arm exercise, or I have this concern and I want to work on my shoulders, but I also need to work on um, you know, th thigh muscles, so mm -hmm. they can put it together themselves. And there will be a, a, a variety of, of levels, meaning, of course, it's doable for everyone, wow. from seated exercise all the way up to the people who like the CrossFit mm -hmm. burn. <laughs>
Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, that's so. going to yeah. be so great. And yeah. it sounds like you offer something for everyone. So that is, that is really fantastic. Yeah, I mean, fitness is for everyone. It shouldn't be yes. there's some sort of level you need to reach. It's like we all are just trying to keep healthy and keep moving. So. It's so true. And I wish that when I were younger that I had understood that better. Mm -hmm. I think that unfortunately fitness, people tend to feel that it, it has to end with a beach body in mind. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, it's all about how you look, but really, ultimately, it's about how you feel. And your goals are different at different ages. At one, you know, you might have um, toning and weight loss at one point, and then you might have balance and coordination at another phase of your life. And it's, again, it's just keeping moving. Work within the realm of what is available to you and what feels safe, but just never stop. Never give up. And I mean, what I mean by that is never give up. Do a little something each day even if it's just marching around your kitchen or snowshoeing a circle in your backyard. Mm -hmm. Wow, well thank you so much um, yeah. for sitting down with me today. I definitely know I'm feeling motivated now. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you so much for oh. all of your great advice. And Thanks for having me, Caroline. I really appreciate it. I love your show and I'm just so glad to be here. It was a real honor to sit with you today. Oh, well thank you so much. It's an honor to have you here. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, PPM TV. We're glad that you're out there. and We're looking forward to seeing you hopefully in the mornings at Priority One. To learn more about Alexis Mason and Priority One, you can visit her website, PriorityOne.us, to watch her show or sign up for one of her classes that take place here at the Fox Run Mall. Now, let's zoom out the lens a bit and recap some of the bigger news stories across the U.S. that have been occurring since the last episode. Big things are happening in Hollywood during awards season. The Emmys and Grammys have already happened, highlighting some of the best Hollywood artists and singers. The Grammys had a record broken by Taylor Swift as the first artist to win the Album of the Year award four times. She then proceeded to announce a surprise album to be released in April. Award season isn't over yet though, as the Oscars are coming up on March 10th, so be sure to tune in to see who wins after this big year in film. On March 3rd, NASA's SpaceX Crew 8 mission lifted off, carrying four people to the space station where they will be for the next six months. This is SpaceX's eighth rotation of the human space transportation system to the space station. They will also be relieving four people who are on the Crew 7 mission, so they will be able to return home to Earth. Super Tuesday happened this past Tuesday with over a dozen states voting in the primary. President Joe Biden remains in the lead for the Democratic Party, and former President Donald Trump remains in the lead for the Republican Party as Nikki Haley removed herself from the Republican race this week. It seems the 2024 election will be quite similar to 2020 as we will likely be seeing the same two candidates on the ballot representing the Democratic and Republican parties. The Sierra Nevada mountains in Northern California have been slammed with an attention-grabbing blizzard this past week. With winds upward of 100 miles per hour and snowfall reaching up to 1 to 2 feet per hour at some points, an expected 10 feet of snow was unwelcome due to the people in the area were warned to stay in place or seek shelter, but we are optimistic that the worst of the storm is behind them. Bringing our attention to the south, Texas is currently battling its largest wildfire in history that is raging through the panhandle. The fires are under control, but Texas and parts of Oklahoma will be dealing with the backlash from this damage that has left families and livestock with nothing to return to. If you're looking to aid families and communities in need, the GoFundMe Wildlife Relief Fund is a verified donation page that's proceeds will go directly to aiding Texans in need. Zooming back in to the Portsmouth Seacoast area, if you're looking to give back to the community or finding yourself with some extra free time this spring, many Seacoast organizations are looking for some help from volunteers. Gather, who was featured on December's Portsmouth Newsroom episode, is currently seeking volunteer help. They're looking for volunteers to assist in sorting fresh food donations and stocking the pantry market, setting up mobile markets throughout the greater seacoast, truck and warehouse assistance, picking up donations, and assisting with food drives and events. There are multiple ways to get involved with Gather. You can learn more on their website at gather.org backslash volunteer. Operation Blessing is also currently seeking out volunteer assistance with clothing sorting and organizing, client assistance, and donations. 
If you don't have enough free time on hands to commit to a full volunteer shift, the organization Lasagna Love matches neighbors who can provide a meal with a neighbor who's in need of a little help, and a home-cooked meal can make all the difference. Their motto is feed families, spread kindness, and strengthen communities. By going to lasagnalove.org, you can learn more about opportunities to volunteer near you. Along with giving back, if you enjoy watching Portsmouth Newsroom and other PPM TV shows, we're currently raising funds to build a sound blocking wall in our new location at the Fox Run Mall. As lovely as it is to hear the sounds of joyous children laughing and playing on the playground right outside our studio, we're hoping to progress towards a more sound controlled studio that we can continue producing content for our viewers in. Check out our Divider and Conquer video recently published to our YouTube to learn more about how you can help us out. Every doma donation, no matter the size, is greatly appreciated. I want to give a special thank you to Alexis Mason of Priority One for sitting down with me and sharing her tips to stay functionally fit while having fun. Make sure to check out her website to learn more about Priority One. This is Portsmouth Newsroom, and that is our show. I'm Caroline Sweet. Thank you for joining me today as we learn about the exciting happenings in the Seacoast area and ways that we can foster a strong community. Thank you.